How's it going everyone, or should I say, my fellow accomplices? And welcome back to Higurashi When They Cry Chapter 3. Yes, in the last couple of episodes, and you know, spoiler alert, if you have not watched the last couple episodes, please do, especially two episodes ago. We, uh, or I, I should not say we here, Keiichi decided to go and commit a murder. Yes, yes, that, that has happened. Uh, for better or for worse... I would assume worse, because murder is not good, or killing of any kind, when a person is involved, definitely not a good deal. So, that happened, and Takano was most likely aware that that happened. Takano most likely did something very similar, because she seemed uh, rather suspicious when we ran into her. Just, just a little bit. At first I thought it was a dream. I was staring at this strange sheet, not really understanding what it was. That was all. I didn't go after it, nor did I ridicule it. The fact was that the boring view was the ceiling of my own room, but I didn't realize that for a fairly long time. Yes, I thought I had been dreaming, but I had actually been staring at the ceiling the whole time. Lethargy, or er, lethargy? Lethar- I know leth- Damn, I cannot speak tonight. I know how it is to be lethargic. I didn't know that was a word. Uh, it was induced by the voices of cicadas. I have a text on my phone. Fantastic. Even after I realized I was awake, I could draw forth the energy to sit up. Everything I could see, everything I could hear, everything was like a television broadcast that had already ended. It was hot. So hot, I could choke on the heat. Sorry, I was responding to a text while speaking. It's really hard to do. My back was moist with night sweats, and it felt gross. Unable to endure it any longer, I tossed in my futon, and finally blood started coursing through my brain. I lazily recalled the long day I had yesterday. The reality is I lay here listening to the voices of the cicadas, and yesterday is so different from it. In order to kill Sodoko's uncle, I had rehearsed, formulated a plan, and dug a hole. It was very hot, and I was tired, wasn't I? And when, every, when evening came, I went to school and called him out on the phone. I panicked for a moment when, I, when he asked where the police station was, but it worked out. And then I awaited him and swooped down. I couldn't remember any more what sort of emotions I'd let control my body. In any case, it didn't go smoothly, but I did it. It was very hard to dig the hole for the body. That feeling of the rain pelting down on me. I don't think I'll ever forget it. I'm surprised he didn't get a cold from it. Like seriously, if any normal person went out of their way and just was in the rain like he was, they definitely would have gotten sick. The rain, the mud, the sprays of blood. The sensation of floundering in a swamp. When I met Takano-san on the way home, that wasn't good no matter how I interpreted it. It was the most misfortunate and uncalculated thing that had happened that night. Everything would have been perfect if only I hadn't encountered her. Well, luckily she's dead. I was just riding my bike with my shovel in one hand through the downpour, utterly soaked. There was no way someone could surmise I was mur a murderer burying a body just from that information. Now that I was thinking calmly, napping under the morning sun, that's what I thought. Still, the more I think about uh, Takano-san's eyes, it seemed like she understood. Takano-san, she knew that I'd kill someone, or I'd killed someone, buried them, and that I'd been on my way home exhausted. Takano-san wouldn't gain anything from selling me out to the police. But that didn't mean I could feel at ease. I had crossed such a bridge to get my tranquil life back, and I'd finally achieved it as a result. But now, for the rest of my life, for all the tranquil days starting today, I'd have to live in fear of when they could suddenly end. I may have twisted my ankle, dulled from total exhaustion, the fact that I couldn't make the snap judgment I needed to, I regretted it more and more as time went on. You didn't have a choice, Keiichi Mybra. You didn't have a choice at the time. You were tired. You were a mess. Even if you had made the decision, you might not have been able to kill her. 
she might have just beaten you instead. In that sense, parting ways uneventfully could have been the safer option. No matter how sharp Takano-san's intuition was, she had no proof. Her suspecting me didn't amount to evidence by itself. Just worry about it when the time comes. Now isn't the time to be worrying. It's the time to be smiling, right? Yeah, we, we killed someone, it's time to smile. You accomplished so much just to gain a new life starting today, didn't you? Then you should be happy at this new morning. If remembering the past is too hard for you, then just consider everything up to yesterday as having never happened. Yeah, easy. You said so yourself. You'd bury it all like it never happened. Well, your wish came true. Everything before yesterday never happened. So be happy, Keiji my bro. Bye. I stuck up my hands lazily. It felt a little silly for me to be doing it. I heaved a sigh from deep in my belly. That sigh got my lungs moving. I felt like I hadn't been breathing until just now. It wasn't enough to admonish myself over. All the dice that could be thrown already had been had, or already had been. And the numbers that turned up weren't bad at all. If I lost with those numbers, then I'd just have to give up, I guess. I grabbed the chest of my pajamas and flapped it back and forth. Cool air flowed over my sweating body. Okay. Nothing before yesterday happened. Nothing. Nothing at all. I'd forget it all. Yesterday was all a dream. What time was it? About midday? Getting myself up and going to school this late seemed kind of absurd. But I needed to go. I felt like going to school would be my first step into the, uh, into my new piece- Into my- Peaceful new life, excuse me. Mixing up my words here. I didn't care how late it was, I would go. I'd go to school right now and get back to the life I had retaken as soon as I could. My lazy body immediately became lighter at the thought. I rolled up out of the futon, bounced onto my knees, and then leaped upright. <laughs> I stuck out my chest with pride at the gymnast-like pose, then took a deep breath of fresh air. The brisk morning air that had gone for- or had been gone for a while, replaced by the crisp air of summer. Downstairs, I got a stern talking to by my mother. Where were you last night? When did you get back? You need to tell me when you won't be home for dinner, things like that. But considering the importance of what I had accomplished yesterday, a little scolding was no problem. In fact, it even felt like the sort of thing that would happen in such a peaceful life. I listened with an irresponsible smile and stepped out into the sun high overhead. It was around the time lunch break would be ending. Everyone would probably be worrying about me. I didn't go to the festival and now I wasn't at school. Well, maybe they weren't too worried about it. Since they would have gotten a small piece of news, but a happy one from Sotoko today. Yes, the small piece of news that her uncle hadn't come home last night. Sotoko would probably live for days in nervous tension for a while, thinking he might still come home. But eventually, those days would end. And finally, Sotoko too would realize her uncle was never coming back. And then Rika-chan would quietly invite her. She would say, you can live with me again. And everything would, would be back to normal. Our lives would go back to how they were before that man appeared. Sotoko would start wearing that extraordinary smile complete with those protruding canines and fool everyone with those traps that she was so proud of. I'd probably be the first target out of everyone, but I wouldn't be mad. In fact, I might actually shed tears of joy at the return of something so normal. Sedako. She'd gradually grow back into the meddlesome personality of hers. I mean, my lack of useful life skills was already completely exposed. I wonder if I'd, uh, ever be a match for Sedako. But that would be such a pleasant thing to see, too. And with such warm, fuzzy predictions, I didn't feel bad for going to school so late. In fact, I wanted to run there now to get there as soon as I could. Instead, I decided to savor the peacefulness of just going to school like normal without running. The world I'd obtained for myself that gave me joy just by walking like this. Yes. The world beginning on this day, on this very day, was something I had won. Without that monumental feat yesterday, I would never have been able to come to school so cheerfully today. The school gate came into sight. 
Just then I heard the principal ringing the bell to mark the end of lunch break. It was a clear, refreshing sound. I stopped despite myself and let myself take it in. Tap. I had stopped suddenly, so there was an extra footstep. With a noise, the blessedness I was feeling throughout my whole body withdrew into any pore I could find. And as if to replace it, I felt like hundreds of hairy caterpillars were climbing up my feet. I turned back, but of course nobody was there. A single footstep could have been easily my imagination, but the footstep felt so ominous. That extra footstep I had heard, after seeing Takano-san off last night, with everything that happened on that insane night, I didn't mind something like that happening once. It had been a hell of a night after all. In fact, having just one hallucination was pretty fortunate. But those footsteps should have ended with yesterday, so if I heard them again today... There was really only one thing it could have meant. Last night still wasn't over. It was still going. Still. That insane night forever. The step I heard. Just that one extra footstep was quietly, quietly ridiculing the nonsensical notion. That the world starting today was completely different from the one that ended yesterday. Well, here's another thing. It could also be Rena. I don't know if I mentioned that in the last episode, but it kind of makes sense. I mean, she lives nearby. She's known for standing in the rain. And in chapter one, we we did find out that she did watch us from afar. She literally stalked us. So for her to do that here, totally understandable, I, I guess. It's not a good thing, but I can see her doing it. My classmates playing in the schoolyard all vanished inside like the tide going out. When I approached the school, it felt like that warm, fuzzy scene had ended and it didn't feel good. <clears throat> Excuse me. At the entrance, I took a quick look in everyone's shoe boxes. Sarko Hojo, she was here. Miona was here too. And Rena, of course. Even Rika-chan was here. Tomita-kun and Okumura-kun were here. Excuse me again. In fact, I didn't see any missing classmates. If there were shoes missing, they would have to be my own. I took off my shoes and stuck them in, and then took out some slippers. There wasn't a single pair left in the shoe boxes anymore. With that, they returned to their rightful state. But as I stepped up onto the wooden floor, I noticed there was just one pair of slippers left. Huh? Who's? Ojo Satoshi. Satoshi, who had never been to school since dis disappearing last year. Until now, we had committed the exact same act of violence, but I guess in the very end, it went differently. You couldn't make it to school, but here I am. I didn't repeat the same mistake you made. I wasn't about to let myself feel superior after er, about that. In fact, I felt an odd sense of fa familiarity with him. A misfortunate bond with someone I'd never met due to following the same fate. Well, we don't know for sure if he did com did commit that murder against his aunt. Who's to say? Not me. I mean, it does look like it, and Mion would probably agree, but I don't know. I just don't. I headed down the hallway towards the usual classroom, and it felt like it had been a, a whole year since coming here. Hey, did you forget Keichi Maibara? Satoshi Hojo didn't really disappear on the night of Watanagashi, did he? <sighs> Satoshi Hojo disappeared a few days later. On Sadako's birthday, if I was right. I didn't know what day it was, but I couldn't say for sure if I had avoided Satoshi's failure unless I remained here past that day. I was still living in that night of insanity. The teacher still hadn't come into the classroom. The other door clattered open the one the teacher wouldn't use, so everyone turned at once to see who had arrived. Everyone looked pretty vacant. Hmm. Suppose I'll greet them. <laughs> Silence. Oh, great. Yeah, that bodes well. When I started to think I'd fallen flat, someone finally started laughing for me. Ohayo, <laughs> Kei-chan. Hmm, 
Hearing Mion and Rena's cheerful voices made me realize how dumb those dark feelings I'd been having at the entrance really were. Oi, oi, matsuri kibun te. Somo somo ore. At the festival at all, remember? Before I could say that, Rikachan smiled at me. Keiichi wa chanto boku no enbu mitete kuremashita desu ka? Um, chanto mite ta yo. Anna ni ippai hakushu shite kurete ta no ni Rikachan kizuka na katta no ka na? Huh. Keiichan ni Shion no yatsu ga chokai dashite kita no o mushi shite ne. Okay, well, everyone's acting weird. Um, okay, you know what? <laughs> I think they're lying. I think they're lying for our sake. But that would mean that they would know. How would they know? That's the only thing I can think of is that that they are lying for our sake. They're trying to make a cover story for us. Mion starts laughing at the memory as she slaps me a few times on the back. Tomitakun was facing me and talking. There was nobody behind me. That meant he was talking to me? Crying at a time like that is a feat only Furude would be allowed to do, said Okumura kun, breathing heavily through or er, heavily from his nose. In my direction. Everyone laughed. If anyone but Rikachan had done it, it would have been against the rules. Rikachan gave out one of her Nipa smiles as she listened to it. In my direction. Rena too turned to me. No, turned turned towards me. And then, with a somewhat embarrassed smile, she whispered to me so only I could hear. <laughs> The class laughed at that cheering and jeering. This whole time, the conversation had been a little off. I wasn't quite getting it. Yeah, a little off. Wasn't that like chapter one material? A mixed in with a little bit of chapter two? Is that supposed to mean something? Uh, Rena seemed taken aback, but when she answered, she did it with a smile. I think that's chapter one. I know Tomatake participated in chapter one. Chapter two, we kind of did like a food thing, I think. And then we ran off with Tomatake, Takano, and Shion. But, okay, wait, 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 hold up. So, okay, that's fine and dandy if they're lying, a cover-up, for whatever reason, whether it's they know or not, but we weren't there. But for them to state exactly what happened in Chapter 1, when those events happened when we were there, naturally and all, how the fuck, how are they coming up with this? Who was this? I don't remember that. Okay, that's chapter 2 material, right? Yeah, that's chapter 2. 
お祭りの実行委員会の模擬店部長さんなのです。マイバラさんは great at making things sound good, isn't he? Yep, whenever he talks about something, it seems a lot better than it actually is. You can say that, or you can't say that, sorry. ケイチ君って売り子さんの才能があるんだね。きっとバナナの叩き売りとかやったら上手だと思うよ。さっきから何の話だよ。だいたい俺。Didn't go to the festival in the first place.I swallowed those words.I didn't know exactly why, but in Hinamizawa, this is what had happened.Yesterday during the Watanagashi festival, Keichi Maibara had appeared, and he had romped around with all the usual members of his club. He made a big scene at a few stalls, snatched a few sticks of takoyaki and okonomiyaki in his glee, rating each of them as delicious or terrible to get everyone excited. And they'd seen a gigantic stuffed animal at the target practice game, and everyone went after it. And then I got a whole bunch of the cork guns, firing them in rapid succession, throwing each one away after using it. And admirably, I shot down the biggest stuffed animal there. And then I gave the stuffed animal the proof of my victory to Rena as a gift. And then our fun came to a close when we had to go see a Rika chan's operatory dance. There was a ton of people squeezed in there, and we all got separated, but we each managed to get into good positions to cheer Rika chan on from. Then in the middle, when Shion came up and asked me to go hang out with her instead of watching the dedication dance, I refused and stayed put watching the dance until the very end. Well, that's, that's a little different. Just, just a little bit. You know, that, that kind of like redirected things. But who? Who was that? Well, everyone's been saying it, haven't they? Keiichi Maibara. I had an urge to yell in anger at my classmates for having so much fun talking about the festival yesterday with Keiichi Maibara. What the hell are you guys even talking about? Far stronger than that feeling, though, was the sheer uncanny nature of this reality I couldn't understand. A k e i c h i m a i b r a who wasn't me was in Hinamizawa yesterday. As I threw away my humanity, turned into a demon, and was busy beating Soroko's uncle to death. I was having a great time at the festival last night. What the hell? I had to suffer through so much. Desperately holding back tears, getting so worn out in that downpour, digging holes, chasing, beating, killing, dragging, and burying. Who was this Keiichi Maibara who had ignored me so and spent such, such a fun, carefree time at the festival, damn it? Who the hell stood in for me as I put my life on the line, working so hard to achieve this treasure like everyday life? If there was another Keiichi Maibara besides me, then what was I? On the night of Watanagashi, where one died and one disappeared, in accordance with Oyashiro Sama's curse, there was only a demon who had killed someone. Dumbfounded as I succumbed to a horrifying possibility, I looked around at my classmates to make sure there was nobody extra I didn't recognize among them, to make sure I wasn't among them. It was a horrifying thought that the real Keiichi Maibara hadn't overslept. And had come to school on time. And that I, who was no longer Keiji Maibara, had just waltzed in here. But no matter how much I checked, the only people here were ones I knew. The man I met every time I looked into a bathroom mirror was not here. Hi! Gogo no Jugio, I'll have to make a message. I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one. The teacher entered and everyone hurried back to their seats. Upon finding me, who was stupidly late, she gave me a stern talking to, but I wasn't listening to it. Wasn't our old life supposed to start today? Something wasn't right. It was just strange. I was supposed to go back to my old fun life after yesterday. I had set foot in an uncomparably mysterious world that was completely different from both my old life and my recent one. Yes, this was without a doubt a different world than the one I'd been living in until now. There was no way such an absurd thing could be possible, but unless it was true, I couldn't explain anything that had just happened. 
In this classroom, I was surrounded by so many faces I knew, and yet I felt isolated. The cicadas sounded no different than they had before, but they seemed somehow false. The air was parched and dry too, making me think, was the air in Hinamizawa always this uncomfortable? No. I have no idea what's happening, to be completely Oi, honest. Nina. To be honest, I was pretty excited afterwards, and I gobbled down some cans of beer. I mean, it's kind of embarrassing, but I don't quite remember some things. For random babbling, it wasn't a bad excuse. Uh-huh. Uh huh. That matched. I called Mion and told her to take Sotoko in my place since I wouldn't be able to meet up with them due to things I had to do. That was the same too. Mion said that when I called her, that everyone had already decided to invite her. Oh yeah. That part didn't matter. Uh, what I was trying to ask was... Today's drink of the session, by the way, is Gatorade. Totally on brand. I haven't had the off-brand stuff in a while. At my sudden threatening demand, Rena was at a loss for words. Oops, I shouldn't have rushed like that. I told her I was sorry. リカちゃんと話してたじゃない。Okay, that does sound like something Keiji would say. I didn't say that. I never said anything like that. I never even went to the Shrine Grounds yesterday to begin with. I never had the time to stop by a place like that. I went to dig the hole as soon as I woke up. I had a pretty hard time doing it. After that, I snuck into the school and made a call. I called him out and lay in wait. And then it started raining really hard. With that kind of downpour, the festival should have come to a halt. In other words, it ended then. From the time the festival started to when it ended, it would have been impossible for me to have swung by the Shrine Grounds. It was already there, or I was already there when Mion and the others dragged Sotoko out and brought, and brought her to the Shrine, and I was talking to Rika-chan. And then, where would Rika-chan say we met? The teacher went out to wash her hands, so I ran over to Rika-chan's desk and asked her directly. ケイチとですかあ、リカちゃんはミオンたちが来る前から俺と話してたんだろいつ俺に会ったんだいつどこでだよケイチが何を聞きたいのかわからないのです俺昨日寝不足で半分頭がぼーっとなっててさ何も
Saiguden? I'd never heard of a building called that before, but we heard about it in Chapter 2. Or maybe I have, but at the very least, I wouldn't know where on the shrine grounds it was. I was too scared to ask anymore. Hmm. Here's another prediction, but it's silly. Since Keiichi decided to, quote unquote, take Oyashiro sama's place, did Oyashiro sama take Keiichi's place? Because it does seem like somebody was there that made everyone think that was Keiichi and basically took his place acting out events that you would see in chapters 1 and 2. Festival events. But it's also sounding like it didn't rain. Like, I don't know if it happened way later, like further into the into the festival events, but it I, I don't know. Did it rain? The more I asked, the more it became clear without any doubt that Keiichi Maibara was present at the Furude Shrine grounds during the Watanagashi festival. The clearer that became, the more doubts, no, fears I had. Who on earth was I yesterday? Whoever that was, he had a good time in my place and managed to go to, uh, to the... He managed to go the entire day without letting them notice I wasn't there, excuse me. Oh, right. When did that person leave everyone? This morning, my mother got mad at me for having stayed out so late last night, uh, which meant at the very least that Keiichi Maibara hadn't come home while my mother was still awake. The festival would have been closed because of the downpour, if I recall right, when I went back to the house's storage room to get another shovel, I think the clock said 7. Since it was already raining hard by then, the festival would have to have closed down before 7. If I'd returned that early, I would have definitely run into my parents. Or at the very least, they wouldn't have asked me when I got back last night. So the Keiichi Maibara from yesterday, that meant he never went home. That meant the downpour happened, the festival was broken up, everyone left. But he didn't go back to the house. Uh, that means... When I arrived at the natural conclusion, a wicked chill suddenly froze my spine and climbed up to my brain. That meant Keiichi Maibara was the same as Satoshi. One day, he never went home. On the night of Watanagashi, he never went home. The downpour interrupted the festival, and on the way home, he suddenly disappeared. And I, who was dealing with the corpse, went home without a problem. I was so tired, I wasn't even hungry, so I went up to my room without a sound and crawled into my futon. Who was I? That much was obvious. Keiichi Maibara. Keiichi Maibara was me. And there may have been another one, but that doesn't negate the fact that I was Keiichi Maibara. And then that other Keiichi Maibara was what? The voices of the, of the cicadas steadily filling the classroom were beginning to bother me. Suddenly I laid eyes on Sotoko, who looks very dead, as per usual, I guess now. Sotoko's expression was dark as always. She seemed completely exhausted at a life of agony she couldn't even imagine an ending to. What had last night been like for Sotoko? Did she have fun with everyone and feel a little happier, even if for a moment? And when she went home, the end of her dream, she'd probably gone to sleep afraid of when her uncle would return. And then this morning, her uncle hadn't come home. And then she went to school. Right now, she must have still been trapped by the rotten idea from which she couldn't be saved, that her uncle would need her when she got back. But you can rest easy, Sotoko. Your uncle won't ever be coming back. I couldn't tell her it was because I'd killed him. When Sotoko realized on her own that her uncle would never return, then that would truly be the end of the long, insane night. That's right. I didn't do anything wrong. I did the best possible thing I could, I could have as Sotoko's Nini. Not an atom in my body regretted it. And that's why you're a psychopath. And look, Calm down and think, Keiichi Maibara. From a certain point of view, isn't it convenient there was another Keiichi Maibara? 
I buried the corpse perfectly, a beginning wouldn't happen, but if worse came to worst and it got out and the investigation got to me, I now had a strong alibi, able to profess the fact that I'd been at the Watanagashi Festival. But accepting something so creepy and using it as an alibi, still, if I proved I hadn't gone to the festival yesterday, I would do no good, or I would do no good, and a whole lot of harm. And that was what left the really, actually bad aftertaste. You'll forget about it, Keichi Maibara. Everything that happened before today. So just forget about the Keichi Maibara who was there yesterday too. Instead, let's watch gently over Sotoko for the day her smile returns. And the day that would mark the end of that insane, all too long night. We should just ask her, like, how she's doing. Goodbye. I thought about many things and saw my thoughts dispersed by many other things. I didn't know whether or not that time had been spent worrying or daydreaming, but either way it came to an end along with the class. Cheerfully, our classmates got their things and ran for the hallway. Mio and Rena and Rikachan were packing up as well. What about Sotoko? This whole day she seemed deflated. Well, her uncle may not have returned last night, but she wouldn't have she wouldn't have known he'd never return. How much I wanted to express that fact to her. Sodako packed up her pencil box and math workbook messily, and after a dark glance at the clock, heaved a sigh, and then went to leave the classroom. Then suddenly somebody placed a hand on her shoulder and stopped her. Her words possessed by a persecution complex hurt. I spoke loudly so everyone could hear. Sotoko always had to tend, to tend to her uncle, uh, so Club had been on hiatus. In our minds, our club was proof of a calm, peaceful life. By enjoying being together, I wanted to make Sotoko realize her days of darkness were over. Under a condition, that was important. That was important. With everything up to her, Sotoko gave a worried look. My uncle might already be home. Thus spoke her darkened eyes, her mouth unmoving. Oh, okay. With one word, but, she looked down. Rena nearly said something, but she was too late. Kate, Oh. My arm on her shoulder seemed to weigh her down, and she threw it off. Oh. I looked over to Mion for help, but now everyone was looking down. My instincts told me that Sotoko hadn't gone to the festival, but Rena said it herself, that she went with Mion to Sotoko's house to invite her. I realized the absurdity of what I just said with Sotoko in front of me. Oji 
今日はおじさん公認だからちゃんと遊んでも怒られないんだよって。At some point, tears began welling up in Sadako's eyes. Sadako was so afraid of her uncle that she couldn't even allow herself time with her friends and went home. No, she was even afraid of letting herself have a good time with her friends. Smiling to herself, her tears began to fall. Bro, what the fuck? ケイツさんみたいにこれをしに、のんびり養ってもらってる人とは、わけが違いますですのよ。外子。楽しくお祭りが過ごせてよかったですわね。私の分まで楽しく過ごせて本当においろしかったですこと。私だって部活がしたい
なんで帰ってこないのおかしいよねだって今朝もちゃんとさとこちゃんのおじさんはいるんだよ Why are they smiling while saying these things? なのになんで帰ってこないなんて言うのかなかなケイちゃん言ってることがさっきから変 Suddenly Mion and Rena started to speak in strange and creepy voices. Don't give me the eyes, please. What were they doing? What were they saying? Oh, god damn it. Satoko no oji san ga iru to, nani ka tsugo ga wari koto demo aru wake? O, o, omae ra koso, nani o itte runda? Satoko no oji nan ka i nai hou ga i ni, kimatte ru da ro ga. Hmm, sore wa mo chiron i nai hou ga i yo ne? Yo ne? <laughs> something. Something wasn't right. Wow, you, you don't fucking say. Something hasn't been right for like this entire episode. The next thing I knew, Mion and Rena were smiling thinly and their eyes were dark and muddy in a way that I'd never seen before. Oh, but I have, and you guys, and <laughs> you guys have, and I really wish we all never have. Yeah, that, that just doesn't bode well. It really don't. And as our eyes met, that mud even seemed to fill the air. Well, at least we can agree on that. Nothing we can do. Something's wrong. Something's clearly wrong here. What the hell was happening? After a moment, a chilly liquid like feeling. As though my blood had been mixed with、uh, sherbet, I crawled up my spine. Uh, Rena was trying to prompt me to say more. There really was no choice, so I killed him. I killed him to protect Sodoko. ほっておきなよ。そのうち解決しちゃうと思うしさ。さとこちゃんがおじさんがいるって言ってるんだからいる。ちゃんと昨日もいたし、今朝もいる。そうならそうでいいんじゃないかな。かな。ミオンとレナ
and buried his ass. Just, you know, calling it how it is. And now events are recurring that we didn't see. It's as if things were rewritten for a certain path, if, if, I, if I can explain it that way. Like, okay, whoever's in charge, whether it be Oyashiro-sama or someone else, didn't like how things were and rewrote events. And now, through Mion and Rena, they are enforcing them, I guess you can say. They're making sure that we are in line and following these events that are supposed to occur. Us trying to kill Sotoko's uncle was not an event that was supposed to occur, so that could have been reround, and Keiichi was set onto a different path. Maybe? Fuck if I know. <laughs> I'm just spewing bullshit now. Because I have no idea. I have no idea what's happening. Fuck me. All right, well, thank you for watching this episode, guys. If you enjoyed it, for whatever reason, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, all that fancy jazz, and I guess I'll see you guys in the next episode where I get scared, because that's happening now. I'll see you guys then. Take it easy.